Hey, thanks for clicking on this video. I know you have a ton of entertainment to choose from, so thanks for clicking here. We've almost made it to 100 subscribers. I always just hope for like 100 views per video, I'll be pretty happy. On the note of YouTube, I love watching vinyl channels. Some of my favorite, I'm Melinda Murphy. She's a nice, calm, easygoing, nice channel. Omaha Introvert, she does an amazing channel of power pop and pop punk. She's very knowledgeable about her stuff. And uh, 8 Vinyl Low, she also does another mate. So there's three right off the bat that every week I make sure I tune in and see if they have a new video or not. But anyway, so I went to California on an uh, uh, airplane a fly, tr a road trip is a car. An airplane is a fly trip, a turbulent trip, I guess you might say, from the airplane. Uh, but before I went, it's like a sport, right? Buying vinyls like a sport. You got to stretch out a little bit. You got to, you got to make sure you don't pull a muscle. So I had to do some training around the Chicago area and online to buy some vinyl first before I went on my weekend California trip to buy more vinyl then. That's how I sold it to my wife. So I want to say thanks to the Groove Records in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, Shake It Records in Cincinnati. Those are two that I ordered online from. And around here in Chicago area, the Old School Records in Forest Park and Reckless Records, of course, in Chicago. From anyway, what'd you buy? Well, I'm about to show you. Jesse's Girl number two from Coheed Cambria. Um, they're really good. It's got a high pitch kind of voice, almost like a Rush type high pitch. But uh, so they did Jesse's Girl Part Two, and the video has Rick Springfield in it. Of course, if you don't know who that is, that's Jesse's Girl Part One. So it's an amazing song. It's a limited edition little 45. Uh, I had to pay a little bit more than uh, Liz cost because I waited too long. A little blue sparkly. Of course, like I said, check out the uh, Google search that video. It's pretty cool. It's got Rick Springfield. You know, cheesy kind of pop rock that I've always liked. Uh, from the 80s, after Journey Nielsen, and then from Bad English. I've been looking for a good copy of this for a while. Went to old school and picked it up maybe for like $10, or I think even less, maybe $8.99 or something. And these usually go for like 20 or more. Bad English, had the CD for a while, but wanted to get the vinyl. Cheap Trick, I'm going to do a review on this one in another video, because I'm a huge Cheap Trick fan and my favorite band. Uh, this is their new record. People are saying, oh, it's so great, it's so great. And you get like, you know, Cheetrick puts out a lot of records and they're getting older and you don't, you know, are they going to really be as good as once what? Are they kind of go like that? This is great. They did a great job. Oh, I can't wait to review. We're going to go song by song on this Cheap Trick record, reviewing this one. But it is right. It's great. It sits up there with their old classics. Uh, band that I love, Jesus Lizard, Got Pure. This is like their first one. I believe this one has a. Uh, drum machine on it if I'm not mistaken so this is before they got a drummer in the band they just kind of did the drum machine but it's where it all started with pure Green Day of course uh, this is after their big breakthrough dookie uh, they put out Nimrod um, it has time of your life the one from the Seinfeld the big hit that probably bought them houses and cars and so on and so forth uh, but I had it on CD for a long time so I wanted to get it on vinyl got that on vinyl Paul Stanley Soul Station I've not played this yet this is what I'm looking really forward to playing uh, Paul Stanley, of course, from KISS. They're on their final tour. I'm going to go see them in like two months for the final time. Them and The Who, I've seen a lot final times. But maybe this is the final time that last time I see KISS. I don't know. I may even wear some paint on that. Go dress up as my favorite uh, Vinnie Vincent uh, Ankh character. Probably I'm going to go dress up. This one, Missing Persons, found this. Actually, this one is not from America's store. I found this at a antique mall. This is eight dollars. It's probably worth between four and six, but I wanted to overpay. It's their first EP, so it's got some of the songs from their first album. Uh, Words, Destination Unknown, Mental Hopscotch, another killer song called I Like Boys. That's a great song, so I really wanted to pick this up. No Effects have not played this yet. It's their EP. It's, it came out a while ago, but they, I think they just repressed some of these. Speaking about represses, always wanted to get this one. Had it on CD when it came out. Nirvana, uh, in utero, got that on vinyl. All the Pantera represses came out, so this is, I think, my, I'm not really a huge Pantera fan. I know some people love them, and they're the greatest thing, Tool and Pantera, they saved rock and roll, I don't know, I like them. Um, and I've been in Texas enough to know that Texas loves their Pantera, uh, but I got Cowboys from Hell, it's, I think it's, I think it's my favorite record of there, so we'll try it out, it's the repress, we'll spin that, I think it's on Colored uh, white and whiskey brown. Heavy metal band that often gets overlooked. This album's just a few bucks, so I had to pick it up. The pack is back. 
I'm still loving you, Raven, here in 2021. Gary Newman, replicas. This is before the in cars. Doo doo. Doo doo. In cart. Before that thing. He's still, he's just, Gary Newman's putting out a new album right now. I saw him a few years ago, and he did an amazing job at concert. He's got really good songs. His songs now are a little more like uh, uh, Trent Reznor y, kind of a little harder stuff, but it's good stuff. So I always wanted to pick up this earlier one. Rise Against. I'll probably do a record rank for Rise Against since they now have a long 20 year plus career. Uh, so I will do that. In store, uh, Chicago here in Chicago, they had a Chicago Day for Rise Against. They had their own day. They came to a Reckless Records and signed autographs. Uh, I'm friends with Joe, the bass player, putting in names. Name, uh, what is that called? Name dropping. Name dropping there. Yeah, my friend. My friend the rock star. My friend. Anyway, I uh, got to say hi to Joe. Tell him what's up. They're going on tour. I know when you're a band, you probably 2020 just killed you. You're hoping for sales online or something, but a lot of times you earn your living from playing live, obviously. So a lot of bands probably very glad to get back on the road 2021. I did spin this. I won't tell you where it ranks because I want you to watch that video, Rise Against Record Rank, but it, uh, I like it. I like it. When I do the video about reviewing music, uh, I'm going to tell you a story about there's like two records I bought because I liked how the cover looks. Now I'm going to have to change that to actually four records I bought because I like how the cover looks. My favorite animal is tigers. I have a little tiger there. The band is called Speed Glue and Shinky. Filipino blue psych rockers. Originally released in 1972. I bought it because it has a tiger on it. I paid a pretty good price for it. So I'm hoping uh, I'm hoping it's good. If not, you'll be, you'll be seeing this on eBay. It's Magic Pumpkin's latest. Seer, Sire, Sir, Sir. This is Flag and Molly. Swagger. 20th anniversary. Man, it's time fly. I remember uh, when I first heard about Flag and Molly, I was reviewing music for, I think I was still reviewing for Punk Planet, and I was handed a promo CD, and it just had print on it. It didn't come with a picture or anything. It maybe came with a one sheet, uh, like a little short promo sheet, but I, I recall, I know for sure, that I tossed it to the side, and I just wanted to listen to the CD without hearing anything. And I put it in, and it was so refreshing. So at the time, I was getting tons of pop punk that kind of all sounded the same and some hardcore stuff that all kind of to me sounded the same and this was like Irish kind of uh, happy punk. I gave it a great review and as I was looking at the sheet the singer uh, Mr. Dave King sung for Fastway which is a heavy metal band that I loved but I didn't realize it at the time which is fine because I just wanted to form my own opinion about the band anyway. So this is the 20th anniversary. Um, I got it for a cheaper price because they just put some of these on sale. So for those of you that ran out and grabbed it right away, hoo -hoo, I saved a little bit of money from them what you paid. Now I got enough to go to Taco Bell, get a burrito when I'm listening to stuff. So this is, oh wow, this is, this is everything. It comes with a studio apartment. Uh, let's see here. We have a Swagger Live 2000 limited edition pins. I can put it all like pin collection I have all around me. Card. I love when they do the cards because I don't have a really way to put the vinyl uh, as to an mp3 to put it in my iTunes so this is nice that the card comes. Although I already, I already have this. have it on CD. A patch. Nice. A record player thingy, felt thingy to put your records on when they're spinning. A booklet all about swagger probably and how they made the record. The lyrics sheet. I'm horrible at lyrics. I'm already like Jimi Hendrix. Excuse me. Well, I kiss this guy. And I'm like, oh, he looks... Oh, no, it's not the lyrics at all. I, I'm really bad with... Oh, this could be the final, I guess. Nice. Oh, I should be showing you. I'm making a video. There's people watching, hopefully. Let's show them. So I guess this is the original record cover. Like I said, I, I got the promo, so I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So those original tapes, maybe? I think red, blue are my favorite color vinyl. Well, black, I mean, because I just play records. Don't really get them for the looks, but hey, looks is a little plus here. Looks nice. This looks. And I think it comes with this record. I think this was the selling point for me of why I wanted to get it. Because uh, Flogging Molly Live. Oh, recorded at a. Uh, with Steve Albini here in Chicago. Cool. Put it all back here. So that's what you get if you get the Flogging Molly Swagger box set. Finally, we make it to the point where I go to California to buy a bunch of records. The first stop was Dr. Strange Records. Say hi to Bill. I have not seen Bill in around 25 years or so. He's an amazing guy. Back in the 90s when I was in bands, uh, two of the bands that I was in, 
um, at least put out one release through Doctor Strange Records, at least one, because he was an amazing guy, fun guy, great record label. Uh, in the beginning, they had bands like uh, Voodoo Glow Skulls, Face to Face, Zoinks, Mandingo. So I went to say hi to him, and he came to the store, and we hugged, we had a nice embrace, we talked about the old days, we talked about the new days, and he took a vodka drink, he took a cider drink, it was great. His store is expanding, like they're pushing out some walls to get more room. He's got, so he's got everything, like t-shirts, he's got pants, you need pants, can't go shopping with no pants, and he's got plenty of records. Now his main thing is punk rock, so if you're going for punk rock, and you're in California, if you fly into the Ontario airport, it's like 10 minutes from the airport, you fly into LAX, Los Angeles, I don't know, drive out just under an hour, and you'll, you'll hit his shop. It's an amazing shop. Uh, first thing I picked was actually left over from Record Store Day. Uh, I actually thought this was going to be one of the like top sellers because it was ACDC. If you go to my video where I review ACDC Power Up, you're going to see this is like one of my favorite songs of the album, Through the Mist of Time. It's not your stereotypical ACDC track. It's got a little strangeness to it. It's awesome. It's got a great hook to it. So I wanted it on picture disc. Do I love picture disc that much? Eh, I don't know, kind of. Do I love the song? Yeah, so I might as well get it. So, Record Store Day release. Another gem I found at the Doc store was a Great White. This is, this is like $2 for this Great White record. This is, this, the big one has uh, Once Bitten, Twice Shot. That was the big song off of this one. This one came from, from 1989 on this one. So way back when the hair was big. And these guys better not been spending all the checks because you got like two years left of this metal stuff and it's going sales are gonna go down boys but anyway they were living it up in 1989 merciful fate picture disc i put in this white sleeves i heard like sometimes they'll actually kind of melt to this sleeve although it's not hot down there merciful fate into the unknown it's not supposed to be the best record but it's a merciful fate record kind of looking neat so i'm anxious to spin that i like the king love the king diamond i haven't really honestly I haven't really listened to a lot of merciful fate which is the band he was in before king diamond but uh i'll listen to this Misfits, American Psycho, don't tell Glenn Danzig and the boys that this is an unofficial release. This is when uh, Michael Graves was singing in the band. I have not heard that. I think I saw them on this tour, actually, when I lived in Florida. But I have not really heard this record, and I've heard a lot of people really love it. They really love this record. So um, I bought it. It's unofficial. It happens when bands uh, attention rush. Uh, if you don't repress your records... Then bands make bootleg copies of it. All the latest Rush records, the, the 180 grand vinyl, like Tess for Echo and all that stuff, they just don't press them anymore. So you gotta pay like $200 for them on eBay. Clockwork Angels, all that stuff. That's a, This is a side rant from what I'm showing you to get anyone who knows Rush out there to start repressing those later records. Because I'm not paying $200 on eBay. I don't have $200. Especially not after this trip, I don't have $200. Motorhead Bastard. You seen your theme? I'm picking up a lot of heavy metal at the punk store. That's how punk I am. Motorhead Bastards. But I believe this one was when they were uh, 1990s, mid 90s, because uh, Mickey D's on drums. He's awesome. When I went to see them, I think I probably maybe saw him on this tour. Grim Reaper, another band that I saw live. This band I saw live just a few years ago. Uh, Steve Grimmett. Grimmett? Grimmett? Grimmett. Grimmett. Steve Grimmett. He's a singer from Grim Reaper, but now it's like his version of Grim Reaper. At the Gate came out a few years ago. I didn't know they were putting out a new stuff, new record. I uh, have See You Hell, Rocky to Hell, 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 we're all going to hell. He has a high range, so I'm anxious to hear as we get older. He's keeping that high range on this, screaming on this record. And a record in the punk rock genre. I've been looking for a long time, had it on CD, all my friends owned it. I never owned it. Besides CD, I wanted to get it on vinyl. Finally got the repress. Stiff Little Fingers. Suspect Device. Uh, Wasted Life. Rough Trade. It's just, this is just a classic record. Everyone should own this. Whether you like punk, whether you like rock. You should own Stiff Little Fingers. This is an amazing record. I've seen them live two or three times, and they are great all the time. So that's what I got from Doctor Strange. Good handful of records here. You can see it's a great store. For sure, if you're in the area, check it out. He does a live uh, stream, live podcast thing, where he's, he goes through and he gets tons of new albums in all the time. So every Wednesday and Friday, Pacific time, so California time, 4 p.m., every Wednesday and Friday, he does this thing on Facebook and Instagram. Check him out. He's a great guy. He's funny. It's like the QVC for rare punk rock vinyl. 
It's awesome. Great guy, great store. You can use the bathroom if you go there too. I know there's a Glass House Records, I want to say. I didn't get a chance to go to that one. I heard that one's really good. Uh, Rhino Records, a friend told me to go there. So let's see what I bought at Rhino Records. It is officially in Claremont, California. It's their little card there. Claremont, California, Rhino Records. I walked in. I loved it. I saw a lot of stuff. I knew the credit card had to come out of my pants because I'm going to buy a bunch of stuff. Sir Elton John, you have anything to say? No. I'm actually going to see Elton John 2022 for the first time. I like to wait a long time before I see my classic rock band. I like to wait till they're 99. Then I go see these bands. All right, first up in Rhino Records uh, has a good used and new selection. I bought Asia. I don't have this one. I have the one with like Heat of the Moment and all that stuff. Uh, they're they're like a little hit album. Uh, this is from 1985. I think this is after that one or two records after that one. This is Astra. I'm anxious to see it. I saw this flipping through the Cheap Trick section. I always go to Cheap Trick and Devo and Kiss and Rush. Those are probably the main four sections I go to. Those are the ones I always hit first. Saw this one, Trick or Treat. And then I realized it was pretty much the same. This is a bootleg, a live bootleg from uh, 1977. Um, they were great. They just had a record store day release of a live show at Cheap Trick, and that is an amazing record. But anyway, uh, Samurai Rock Band and this, a pretty much same show. I think there's like one song on one album that isn't on the other one. Uh, but I picked it up because I love Cheap Trick. They're my favorite band, and I uh, just wanted to hear. I don't know. I haven't heard them back to back, so I don't know if... Samurai Rock Band has a better quality, or this has a better quality. I don't know. Send me a message or a comment, and I'll let you know which one. If you're looking for a Cheap Trick bootleg, which one to get. Danzig, Loose Ridge, Danzig 2. This is also, I think, this is a repress. I do believe this is unauth unauthorized as well. A lot of Misfits and Danzig is unauthorized. I don't know why they didn't repress stuff, but I'm sure there was some reason behind it. Uh, but this is number two. Looking forward to spinning that. My favorite bands from the 80s metal scene is Rough Cut. Good rock band, good metal band. Uh, Paul Shortino's amazing voice. This is like their sessions from 84, right before they released their debut album. So I believe these are like alternative takes of some of the songs on their first record. It is a great, great rock and roll heavy metal record. Rough Cut. They were overlooked too much, but they're great. From Chicago, the Feds, the singer Mark sadly passed away this year. Uh, Ken from the Bullweevils, my friend Ken plays on this. He was a Fed, so was Mark. Uh, and it was a great band, short-lived band. They were on the Doctor Strange Records, but I didn't find this at Doctor Strange Records. I found this at Rhino Records. It was 10 bucks. I had to get it for 10 bucks. I've had the CD forever, but now I finally have it on vinyl. So um, I'll be spinning this and thinking about you, Mark. Halloween! Keeper of the Seven Keys was their big thing after it. They did uh, Pink Bubbles Go Ape. I got that one on vinyl, repressed. And they did Chameleon around that time, too. Uh, some people don't like this record because it's too poppy and too strange or too, I don't know, unlike their Keeper of Seven Keys Part 1 and 2, so they didn't like it too much. Uh, but I think I'm going to gravitate to it because I think I like weird stuff and poppy stuff. So. Uh, I was glad to find this on vinyl for only 20 bucks. I believe it's a little more than that for the average price. So that case, Rhino Records, you did great. You were cheaper than the average bear there. Because usually people say, oh, they're like 2 or $3 more than the average bear. What do you think, Elton John? Elton John's afraid of bears. Don't ask him that. Styx has a new record out. Styx has a uh, new like EP out for Record Store Day, which I knew of, but I didn't know they were putting out a full name. So when I was looking through the Styx section after I glanced through the Rush section, I found this and had to buy it. Had to buy it. So it's a full record of all new stick stuff. Of course, no Dennis the Young. I wish they would just get Dennis the Young to play a few songs, get back in a band. Jeez, you could take separate limos of the show. Just get along for one last tour, but I guess whatever. I do like the guy um, who replaced Dennis the Young. Sometimes he sounds a little kind of like an elf to me, like Chipmunky Elf, but he does a great job singing. So. Uh, I can't sing like that, so who am I? Just some idiot critiquing people, calling them elves. Sticks new record. Pick that one up at Rhino Records. Metallica, Anthrax, Megadeth, Slayer. But if you were to do like a Big Four Part 2, they would for sure be on it. Amazing heavy metal band. I believe they're originally from the Bay Area. 
Uh, this is one of their records. I'm trying to get all their stuff. Uh, they have a lot of records. This was limited to a thousand I saw, so I'm like, ooh, I'll get it. That way I can be one in one thousand. Testament. The Gathering, I believe this is what this was. And last but not least, I look through the soundtracks. I am trying to not buy so many soundtracks anymore because I realize I get them and I really don't listen to them that much. This is Henry Portia of a Serial Killer, filmed right here in the Chicago area. I actually got to meet uh, the lead actor, Michael Royker. Royker. He's in Guardians of the Galaxy. Is is the blue guy who has the little flute that goes through people. That thing. He was just one of his first roles. He was a serial killer. It's a creepy movie. I don't like horror movies. I don't like disturbing movies. This was disturbing. Uh, pretty much horror movies. It was creepy. But it's got Enough's Enough on it from Chicago. And actually on this, they were spelled like Enough was, I think, actually spelled like the word Enough. Not the cheesy uh, E-N-U-F-F. -E -F, the heavy metal spelling. This was the real spelling. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, a song called Fingers on it from uh, Enough's Enough. And I just... A song called Kill Hookers are on it. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, names. Yeah, I killed my mama. That starts off side B. Yeah, I killed my mama. She's your sister. Chukin, Kill Hookers. Let's go shopping. Drive up. Home invasion. My mistake. They're just some of the songs. Some of the songs I can't say the titles. I don't want to swear on this channel. Keep it clean. Little kids are watching us. Kids collect vinyl nowadays, so they don't curse. Henry Porch of a serial killer, but. You do make soundtracks of Super Kill. So that's the last thing I picked up at Rhino Records. I'm very happy. This all in all this California trip was amazing. Oh, I picked up CDs. Every record store. CDs are coming back. Tapes are coming back. Oh, I didn't pick up any tapes because, uh, like I said in one of my videos, to check out the prices on tapes now. But anyway, singer Green Day, Bill Joe Armstrong, got his solo record there. A lot of pop punk. This is all covers, so if you like his voice, you want to hear him sing songs like I Think We're Alone Now, then you get this. If you want to hear him sing songs like Manic Monday, then you get this. Jimmy Eat World, I believe this is their second record, way back when. And then Alkaline Trio with One Man Army Split. Alkaline Trio, there's a version of Sadie, uh, early version before that was on the record uh, version of that. So this is, well, this is the C. It's, it's in the first version. Because the other version was on their record, Crimson, I believe. Uh, so this is Sadie. So now it's finally. Now we're finally done. Thank you. If anyone has watched this all the way through, thank you. So thanks for watching. Congratulations on making it. Hope you got some ideas on what you should buy and what is out there. And uh, I'll see you again real soon.